Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to introduce to you the International President of the United Steelworkers, Tom Conway. Sit down, sit down. What are you doing? Sit down. Not like I'm going to give you money or something here, so. <laughs> no, thanks for that introduction. Sometimes I wonder where we get these introductions from. Um, but it, it is appreciated. Look, I was really encouraged by the show of hands that went up that this is your first safety and health conference, joint safety and health conference. I think it's tremendous that we have that many people coming back, that there's a next and a newer generation of people who are stepping into these safety jobs and taking them over as people move on, as retirements take place, and as we just expand our ability in our shops to sort of take care and look out for one another. So um, I do really appreciate uh, you, you, your willingness to be here for the first time. I'll tell you a little bit of history about where you're at and, and in some ways why it's important. So in this county, Allegheny County in 1910, a young woman, journalist who was an attorney also, by the name of Crystal Eason, watched what was going on in the communities and the towns in Allegheny County and the surrounding counties and the injuries and deaths that were occurring in the workplace. And in Allegheny County alone, in 1910, there had been 526 fatalities. And this, and she got commissioned something called the Pittsburgh Survey. And they began to study what was going on. And she did it, frankly, through a series of interviews and talking with families and friends and members who had, who had lost their lives. They weren't members at the time. Um, and built this narrative that began a discussion of workers' comp laws in the nation. Because prior to that, there was nothing. If you got killed at work, if you lost your limbs, or you lost your legs, or you were burned so horribly you could never work again, you and your family were just out of luck. Now, maybe the company would throw you a bone to keep you out of court, but you couldn't afford to go to court anyway. So you effectively were done, and there was no protections for you. And it began a long struggle to get workers' comp laws. And something that now, you know, we, we're curious about, are they good enough, do they work enough? Um, the idea of a, of a no-fault law didn't even exist back then. And it was in this, this county where you're sitting today where that work began. It would be another 60 years before we got OSHA in 1970. The length of time it takes for these kinds of issues to get addressed in our nation, in both our nations, is just horrible to think that from 1910 to 1970, before we got a law, a federal law to protect workers in the workplace. And at the time we got OSHA, we were still killing 38, mem 38 people a year in the workplace were dying. We still have horrendous numbers, and there's still, um, that 38 was a, a day. We're still losing over 10 to 14 workers a day in this country in the workplace. And there are still massive struggles that goes on with safety and health. And after, it would be another 30 years after Crystal Eastman's work here in Allegheny County before we could get our union formed. And we didn't get it formed until 1940. And it was safety and health in so many ways was the foundation of this union. What brought working people together was finally saying if, if this is going to stop, if this terror in the workplace is going to stop, we've got to figure out a way to stop it ourselves. And so we formed this Steelworkers Union. And safety and health was a big priority. And, and because safety and health is about scheduling, it's about how much time you're at work, it's about forced at work, it's about how many 
staff you have and are there enough people and do you have the PPE and do you have the tools and the equipment? Those are the daily fights that you're in. Those were the same fights that were present then. And we continue to have them. We saw them recently in the pandemic when the country, other than the handful of you and others like you in the country, nobody knew what PPE even was. And it turned into common language in the country. And so now there was a discussion about how come we're not equipped? Why don't we have the stuff that we need to keep people safe? So nobody should be under the illusion that it just takes care of itself and that it gets better on itself. It takes care of itself because we have to constantly fight and push it. And it's going to take a long time. The same lengths of time it took to go from the Pittsburgh survey to getting workers' comp laws to eventually getting a union to eventually getting OSHA which was a product of the union's fights, all those things are linked together. And frankly, they all flow out of the work that you do. The grievance committee, in many ways, flows out of the work that the safety committee is the foundation of. The administration, the fact that we have local unions, are built around our ability to organize and talk to our coworkers and talk to our friends within the workplace and build a local union structure where you can come together on a monthly basis and talk about what's going on. Look, we've, we've made a lot of progress and we do a lot of good things in safety and health and I'm not one to minimize them. But I'm not naive either about how we're valued. And when, we, when there's a fatality in a workplace, OSHA issues are fine. We had two brothers burned to death in Ohio at BP at the refinery, and OSHA recently issued a fine. And it's $156,000 for the loss of these two people. The SEC issues fines that are massive in comparison to that. The EPA issues fines that are massive in compared to that. So if you kill a worker, it's pretty cheap. You cheat a rich man out of some money, you're gonna pay through the ass for it. And so that's how they think about the value of workers. And that's how they will see us and continue to see us if we don't drive that fight. And we're in the middle of a fight right now. Our country is about to go through a struggle over its debt ceiling. And look, its debt ceiling is we owe some money. We owe people money. It's like owing your mortgage every month. And we've got to authorize that payment. That's all the debt ceiling is. But we're going to get a fight in this nation that, oh, before we pay that bill, we've got to make cuts. We've got to find cuts to things. Let me tell you something. The first cut they'll put on the table is the same one they've always put on the table. It'll be cuts to the working class. It'll be cuts to working people. We don't have enough OSHA inspectors now in this country that if we had to inspect every workplace, it'd take over 150 years to cover that ground. So the fights that we have, if you're the kind of trade unionist who says, look, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm working within the two covers of my contract. I'm making sure this place is safe and I will hold that company to task. I understand that thinking, but it, you live in a larger world. And that world is part of what is our government's gonna do about safety and health? How are they gonna treat workers? How do I support my legislative committee when it's out doing its job trying to drive these bills and make sure that these things don't happen. That's what makes us a union. That's what pulls us together, that we do these things together, that we're not living in a silo. Brothers and sisters, you are the foundation of that. The safety and health work is the foundation of our union. It's what started it. It's what keeps it going. It's what thrives it. When we go out to organize, and we're trying to talk to new shops, 
Safety and health is one of the things we talk about. We're in a changing economy, and we see a lot of changes coming, and there is a growth again to a degree in manufacturing. But we also see a lot of experienced steel workers leaving the shop and new people coming in. And frankly, in many places, not much of a plan to train them. They're sort of thrown into the workplace and said, be careful out there. This place is dangerous. Look, we can't thrive with that. We can't live with it. But that's what we're going to deal with. And this is a time that we have to be particularly cautious and watching for that and looking out for new people coming into the workshop and looking out that they're taken care of and that someone's talking to them and they're not just left to their own devices. And we see changing workplaces. We see a rise in injuries in healthcare workers who got to worry about getting stabbed with something sharp, who worry about back injuries because there's not enough staff to help them move patients, and who frankly got to worry about violence in the workplace from patients who maybe don't have the kind of mental health stability they need. And, and, and you go to work as a, as a nurse or, or in the healthcare industry, you got to risk getting punched in the face by someone. Those things are things that we've got to protect against. We've got to look out for each other. So, look, tomorrow we're going to be joined by the management. And I am certain there are some managers who want to do a good job, particularly in safety and health, and don't have an interest, even if it's a business interest, in not seeing people get hurt. But they are the management. And we shouldn't bullshit ourselves about how things can run if they were left to their own devices. So tomorrow my speech will be nice and I'll talk to him about jointness and how we should get along. <laughs> and, and if one of them snuck in the room today, I'm sorry if you got your feelings hurt, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> but, But we need to remember who we are, and we need to remember how we got here. You know, when I wasn't expecting to hear this story again either when Steve was talking about what happened at, the, um, at Bernie's shop when those guys were killed. When the word came to that, there was a training session going on at Linden Hall. I'm sure many of you have had the opportunity to be there. Bernie was a, long, a young local union president in that training session, and I had been down there to speak to them. And Bernie got this phone call, and it was, I remember talking to him, and I said, look, you're going to be fine. Get down there, get out there with your people. You'll get your hands around this. For the first time, when a fatality hits you when you're doing this work, it is rattling, and it's rattling to you but it's a time that you really do have to step up and you can rely on, this, on the safety and health staff we have here, you can rely on the ERT, the union will give you the backing and the structure you need to go in and do that job, make sure it's done honestly, that there's integrity investigation, that nobody is whitewashing it and trying to cover shit up and that they're not just blaming the worker for what's going on. You know, over the weekend, we issued a call to the paper industry. We've got this fungus that's in the mills up in Escanaba. And out of a 600-person shop, we've got nearly people, 100 people, infected with a fungus, of all things. And we had a fatality. We had a, a, a guy pass away over the weekend over it. And look, this, this guy had some underlying conditions, frankly. And he maybe wasn't in the best of health when he went there. But if they try and make that the story, that's just about blame the worker. Because the truth is, there's something wrong in that mill, and it needs to be fixed. And we've told the rest of the industry, you need to get into your shops and find out what the hell is going on. Don't sit and wait for it to show up. Get out there and be proactive and scrub the place down if you need to. But don't sit and wait for something to fall when you know it's out there pending. So it's, 
look, it's that kind of work that we have to do every day. We depend on you. You're not just eyes and ears in this. You are the people who are going to carry this out, who are going to keep these places safe, and are going to help this union thrive. So I thank you for your time, for coming in here, for spending your time this week. You'll get a lot out of it, and together we'll move forward. So thank you very much.